This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the initial setup of working in the editor, as there's a few things to take care of before we get into it. We'll take a look in my Arma 3 other profiles, and we need this folder as it stores all our mission files that we work on in the editor. To find it, if you're working in Windows 7, it'll be inside your documents which can be found in your libraries on the left hand tab of any window. Going into that, you'll find Arma 3 other profiles and that'll contain your actual profile, in this case we'd see Banjo. We'll go into that and take a look at what's in there. Missions will contain all the mission folders that you're currently working on. MP missions are going to be your multiplayer missions. That's where you'll put those. Saved is going to be a lot of your settings for profile and mods. User saved is going to contain all the user saves from your mission, so if you need to delete one, you'll just delete the folder out of there. Next we'll take a look inside a mission folder so we can get an idea of what's in there. As I open the folder, we can see three files, an init, another script, and the mission.sqm. We can see they all contain mission.sqm, although the script files may vary. The mission.sqm is the actual mission file that's stored when you save a mission, and it's the only thing that will be stored when you save a mission until you add scripts and initialization scripts and descriptions to it. We can see an init.sqf script file in this mission folder, and this is going to be one of the most common scripts you'll use. Anything contained inside an init.sqs is activated on mission start. In a future video, I'll go over a lot of the uses of an init.sqf, but for now we'll look at how it's created. We can see on my desktop I have three script files, and they are basically to save me from having to create them each time I use them. To create a script file, right-click and select New Text Document. Go into Save As. Save it as all file types in the Save As type. And here you'll enter the name, simply init.sqf. Other scripts can contain the sqf and sqs file formats, but the init.sqf is unique in that it's set up specifically for initialization of scripts and whatever commands you want to put in it. Two other file types you're going to use is a description.extension and just a regular script file. To create either of them, now that you know how to create a file, it's done in the same way. Enter the name, save it as all file types, enter the extension. But for now we'll take a look at a script file. We can see it's just a blank script file, and going into a mission folder here, we'll track down another script file and compare it. Taking a look at this eject.sqf script file that I created, we can see contained inside is some group data, vehicle data, a command to move units in and out of a vehicle, as well as eject at the very end. To enter this data into our script file, I will simply copy and paste the information into my blank script that I have on my desktop, and I will also rename the file, and since it's already a script file, I don't have to enter the extension into the name. This is also the same reason I tend to keep extra blank script copies on my desktop, so I just rename them as is, copy it, paste it into the mission folder, and then just delete the data out of the script file and rename it back to script. So I always have a template stored on my desktop, saving me from creating them each time. I'll go over the actual uses of scripts and how to call a script like this eject sqs in a later video. I simply just wanted to demonstrate how to create the files and how to track down your folder to store the files. One final area which has less to do with the editor, but still a topic I wanted to overview, is modding and adding mods into Arma. Select Arma 3 in Steam Library, select Properties, this menu will appear. Then select Set Launch Options. This is if you're not using a mod preloader, by the way. Adding mods is done by adding a reference to the folder, so it knows what to load. We do this by using a dash, followed by the word mod, followed by equal symbol, all without spaces. Everything after that equal symbol is going to be an add symbol, followed by the folder name for the mod. Uh, when you download mods, they luckily usually do come in the proper format, so simply select the mod you wish to enable, copy its name, and paste it 
into the set launch options. After each entry, use a semicolon to separate them so it doesn't uh, get a script error trying to load a folder that contains the incorrect name. With all of that set up out of the way, in our next video we'll take a look at the actual editor's interface.